It takes more than bricks and mortar to build a church. It takes a community, a community of people who have chosen to practice their faith together. By doing so, they have also become part of a larger body called a denomination, in this case, the Presbyterian denomination. Though the members of this church have much in common with other Christian congregations, it is also distinctly Presbyterian. But just what does it mean to be Presbyterian? The framework for our denomination lies in our history, our form of government, and a shared set of beliefs. These beliefs stem from the Reformed tradition, which has followers around the world. In life and in death, we belong to God, through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The opening lines from a brief statement of faith declare that in life and in death, we belong to God whom alone we worship and serve, a belief Presbyterians share with Christians everywhere. Because we belong to God from the moment we are born until the day we die, and even after we die, we never need to worry about earning God's love or our own salvation. God's grace and our salvation are God's generous gifts to us. This notion which we call justification by grace through faith, is at the core of our beliefs. We show our gratitude through our worship and how we live our lives every day. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith. Presbyterians everywhere worship and grow in their faith together in congregations. Although our relationship to God is personal, it is not private. Participation with other believers is an essential part of that relationship. The sacraments that Presbyterians share, baptism and the Lord's Supper, reflect this point of view. Both are practiced in the presence of others and bind the community together. But there is still room for considerable diversity in our midst. Look around you. Most people would find it hard to tell a Presbyterian from, say, a Baptist, Methodist, or Roman Catholic. Presbyterians come in all shapes and sizes, all ages, and from all over. There are more than two and a half million members in the United States, and more than 11,000 congregations, large and small. We worship in a variety of ways, from traditional to contemporary and we hold a variety of views on issues political, social, and theological. In fact, Presbyterians are encouraged to engage in debate and dialogue with one another as a way of discerning God's will for humanity. Although this can sometimes lead to tension, we believe the church and society are strengthened when we wrestle with important matters of faith and life together as a denomination. In other words, ours is a faith that is constantly in motion, seeking renewed relevance in response to changing realities. This is reflected in the Latin phrase, Ecclesia Reformata, Semper Reformanda, the church reformed, always being reformed, according to the word of God. While this approach may sound a bit chaotic, in one thing, Presbyterians are united. The Bible is, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the Church Universal and God's Word to us. I believe in God the Father Almighty. Over the years, we have also adopted creeds and confessions found in our Book of Confessions. They help us interpret how we live together as a community of faith. At the same time, we believe that God alone is Lord of the conscience, and in that sense, we have a direct relationship to God. In sovereign love, God created the world good and makes everyone equally in God's image. Because all of us are created equally in God's image, we believe God calls both women and men to all ministries and positions of leadership in the church. We in turn elect both women and men to serve our denomination as deacons, elders, and ministers. Presbyterians believe all members share in the responsibility for ministry and leadership within the church, a notion we call the priesthood of all believers. Through worship, we affirm our faith and show gratitude to God. 
but Presbyterians believe in putting faith into practice through service to the larger community in which we live. Over the years, we have been known, appreciated, feared, and loved for our active engagement with society. It is sometimes said that while other things divide us, mission unites us. One of the first actions of the First General Assembly in 1789 was to send missionaries to the frontier. During the 1800s, as our nation expanded westward, Presbyterian missionaries often led the way. Among them were missionaries Narcissa Prentice Whitman and Eliza Hart Spaulding, who in 1835 were the first white women to cross the Continental Divide. As they served among the native people of the American West, missionaries started not only new congregations, but also schools, hospitals, and other institutions to meet the needs of a growing country. Ours is an activist faith. Our mission firmly rooted in the gospel ministries of preaching, teaching, and healing, and in Christ's example of bringing comfort to the poor, the hungry, and the oppressed. It was Presbyterians who first brought the gospel to many other parts of the world. We established new churches and nurtured them over the years, training their leaders and helping them to grow with strength and vitality. Many of these churches are among the ecumenical partners that work with us today in worldwide mission. The Presbyterian Church has hundreds of mission personnel, including volunteers, working in more than 90 countries. But while we often think of missionaries as those who practice their faith in other parts of the world, Presbyterians are called to be missionaries right where they live, regardless of their occupation. Because we believe that God calls all of us to service, we tend to define mission broadly, its key components being to proclaim the gospel to all people, provide for their spiritual needs, and work to improve human conditions. It is the latter that causes us to respond to human need, to make our voices heard, and to work for justice and peace. In all that we are and all that we do, we are called to give witness to our faith and to demonstrate what God intends for all humanity. In fact, the denomination can trace its early history to this kind of activist faith. In the 16th century, a group of reformers rebelled against the established religion, seeking to build a church more faithful to scripture, one in which salvation could not be bought and sold through human mediaries. Among the reformers was the French lawyer, John Calvin, who was an admirer of another Reformation leader, Martin Luther. It is sometimes said that if Luther was the heart of the Reformation, Calvin was its mind. In his writings, Calvin articulated the reformed principles that remain today at the core of our Protestant faith. The sovereignty of God, the priesthood of all believers, the authority of the Bible, and justification by grace through faith. It was Calvin who ushered in our long tradition of support for education as well. The reformers emphasized knowledge of the Bible and its translation into the language of the people, thereby contributing to an extraordinary explosion of literacy in the Western world. The Reformation led to the spread of Protestantism throughout Europe and across the channel to the British Isles. Calvinism, in particular, spread quickly from its center in Geneva, Switzerland. The image we have of the strict Calvinist stems from those early years when Calvinists were in fact characterized as militant, uncompromising, and perfectionist. In England, and later in America, they would be called Puritans. In the 1550s, John Knox, who studied with Calvin in Geneva, brought Calvinism to Scotland where Presbyterian became the established religion. While many of the early Presbyterians who came to this country emigrated from Scotland, an even greater number came from England and Ireland. The first American Presbytery was organized at Philadelphia in 1706. Churches had a strong influence on the social and political life of colonial times, and the Presbyterian Church was no exception. Presbyterians were actively engaged in this country's struggle for independence. King George III of England 
once referred to the Revolutionary War as that Presbyterian rebellion. Cousin America has eloped with a Presbyterian parson, said a member of the British Parliament, referring to the Reverend John Witherspoon. Witherspoon, who came from Scotland, was one of 11 Presbyterians to serve in the Continental Congress and the only clergyman to sign the Declaration of Independence. American Presbyterians were also leaders in the fight for religious freedom and for the separation of church and state. During the nation's early years, the Presbyterian Church grew steadily, but its influence extended beyond its size and numbers. The Church actively sent missionaries to the frontier and helped to establish schools and universities. Continuing in the footsteps of Calvin, Presbyterians in this country have always recognized the importance of education, theological education as well as general education. But our history has some rough spots as well. Although our tradition says we are to remain united within the church, even when we disagree on important issues, that hasn't always happened. Over the years, the Presbyterian Church in this country has divided, and parts have been reunited nearly two dozen times. In 1861, when our nation was split by civil war, so too our denomination. But while the American Civil War ended four years later, it would be more than a hundred years before the two main branches of the Presbyterian Church were reunited in 1983. Because Presbyterians like John Witherspoon were actively engaged in our young nation's political life, it is no coincidence that the governing structure of the Presbyterian Church bears a remarkable resemblance to that of the United States with its representative bodies and its system of checks and balances. While the historic statements of what we believe are contained in our Book of Confessions, the ways in which we govern are found in the Book of Order. Together they form our church's constitution. Our system of government differs from that of other denominations. For example, in the Baptist church, authority rests with each congregation. In Lutheran, Methodist, and Episcopal churches, authority rests with individuals who hold church office. In the Presbyterian Church, decisions are made by governing bodies comprised of ministers and elected lay leaders known as elders. The word Presbyterian, in fact, comes from the Greek word presbyteros, which means elder. Just as in society, we elect officers to govern our communities, states, and nation, Presbyterians elect men and women to make decisions on the church's behalf. There is one important difference, however. The Book of Order says that church officers are not elected simply to reflect the will of the people, but rather to seek together to find and represent the will of Christ. Church officers govern through a system of governing bodies designed to ensure that each part of the church is connected to the whole. Sessions are responsible for the mission and government of a particular congregation presbyteries and synods for churches within a particular region. The General Assembly governs and coordinates mission on behalf of the whole denomination. All work together to further the ministry and mission of each part of the church. Someone once said that being Presbyterian is an occasion for discovery rather than a means of conformity. We are a church of many styles and practices, for people of many different backgrounds, united by our faith in Jesus Christ. A church that doesn't claim to have all the answers, but one that is trying to ask the right questions. A church that celebrates unity amid our diversity a church that strives to put our faith into practice to make a difference in the world. We are a church that is proud of our reformed tradition and the role we have played in our own nation's history. A church that recognizes we are but one part of God's family. We are a church that actively works with sisters and brothers in Christ, a church dedicated to breaking down the barriers that divide us a church where everyone is welcome.
We are a church that believes we are called to serve God in everything we do. In life and in death, we belong to God, whom alone we worship and serve. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord.